Hi everyone, I'm Claire Cambardella. I'm the Baltimore Harbor Environmental Education Program Manager for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. And I'm out here today in Baltimore County where I'm going to be testing the water quality of my local stream. So what is water quality? Uh, it could be a number of different things depending on who you are and why you're asking, but it is the measurement of physical, chemical, and or biological characteristics of the water. And you could care about this because um, the water is going to be used for drinking or because you're concerned about a certain population um, that is living in the water. Um, or you could be concerned about how safe the water is for recreation. So the chemical characteristics of the water that I'm going to be looking at today include dissolved oxygen, which is the amount of oxygen that's dissolved in the water for fish and other um, invertebrate species that might be found crawling around in these rocks. Um, the temperature of the water tells us a lot about the season, also who might be out and migrating or hibernating. pH is an important chemical factor that controls a lot of other chemical factors. Um, nitrates and phosphates are the uh, nutrients that downstream can uh, unfortunately lead to dead zones in the main stem of the Chesapeake Bay. And then conductivity is something I'm going to be testing today because we're in a freshwater stream. So the first test that I'm going to show you is the dissolved oxygen test. And um, to perform this test we use a YSI Pro 2030. Um, and all I have to do is put a probe into the water and I'll get a digital readout, which is pretty cool. Um, and right now you can probably hear the stream sort of bubbling behind me. And what I expect is that all this water movement is going to be putting a lot of dissolved oxygen into this water. So we'll see if my hypothesis is correct. So here's our beautiful bubbling stream. You can see I've put the probe into the water close to those ripples, but not directly in it. And again, I thought that our dissolved oxygen reading would be pretty high, but the Pro 2030 tells us otherwise. Our dissolved oxygen level is actually at 5.7, which is healthy, but a little lower than I thought it would be in um, such a moving water stream. Uh, you can also see the temperature of the water there. It's 14.5 degrees Celsius, so it's still um, pretty chilly for this early spring. So if you remember earlier, I said that um, moving water is more likely to have more oxygen. And here we're at this little waterfall, and I just couldn't help myself. I figured we might as well stop and check the dissolved oxygen level here too. As you can see here by this little waterfall, we've got a much higher level of dissolved oxygen. It's 9.22224 milligrams per liter compared with our just barely above 5 milligrams per liter, just a little ways upstream. Okay team, now I'm going to test the pH of the water. And to do that, I'm going to use our trusty wide range Lamont kit. This is a pretty simple test. I just get to mix some chemicals together and compare the colors. Uh, usually we want our pH to be somewhere around 7, which is neutral. So let's open this up. Inside we've got our color comparator, our test tube, and our reagent. So I'm going to fill this up. Add 10 drops. All right, so let's see if we're anywhere near seven. Actually, looks like it's a pretty perfect match. So I'm gonna say that our pH level today is 7. 
So I'm gonna take a measurement of the level of nitrate in the water. And this level, along with the phosphate level, will give us an idea of whether or not there are excess nutrients in this water. And those excess nutrients um, can lead to algae blooms and um, dead zones later on down in the Chesapeake Bay. So I'm gonna take these two test tubes and fill them up with stream water. I've put some chemicals into this test tube and now I'm gonna shake it for one minute. So now I have to let that color develop for five minutes. So I'm gonna start another test. Now I'm gonna test the phosphate in the water. And to do this, we use a colorimeter, um, which is, makes my job really easy. All right, team, we want to see a phosphate level of less than 0.1. And today we've got a reading of 0.08, which is what we would consider to be in the healthy range. So this is good news. So we've come to the final step in our nitrate test here. And what I'm gonna do is you can see um, test tube B here. These are our test tube. Test tube B has had chemical added to it, um, which is reacting with the nitrate to turn the water um, that shade of yellow. And what I need to do is figure out which number here most closely corresponds to that color that test tube B has turned. So, nope. B is definitely darker than that top, so it's not zero. It's not one. It might be close to three. And maybe our closest match today is actually five. So um, that doesn't mean that's our result. We actually have to convert that um, result to the concentration of nitrate in the water, which is gonna be in milligrams per liter. So just to quickly sum up our water quality results today, um, we've got a healthy level of dissolved oxygen, even though it's a little lower than I thought it was gonna be. Um, the temperature just tells us that it's springtime. Um, pH is uh, right at neutral where we want it to be. Our nitrate level is a little high. The phosphate level is within a normal range. Um, and then the last one, the conductivity, is also within the normal range. So that is normal um, in a range between about 150 to 500 micro siemens per centimeter. And that's actually a measurement of how fast an electrical current can travel through the water. And it tells us um, how many how much dissolved ions are in the water. And uh, streams in urban areas can tend to have higher conductivity levels, which isn't natural for those streams. So that's why it's measured a lot of times in urban and suburban um, areas and can give us an idea of stream health. So if I were going to be judging the stream health solely on the um, chemical parameters that we measured today, then I would say it's pretty healthy, um, but that the nitrate level is a little high. Um, but remember, there are lots of other ways to determine the health of a stream. So we only looked at chemical factors. We only looked at one day. We also need to consider biological factors and physical factors as well.